Now this build is one I've been waiting patiently to post. I love precision playstyles. In fact, the Hunter is the first archetype I used going in when I first started playing Remnant 2. And when I unlocked the Invader, well, I don't think there can be a better combination for a build like this. Hey, what's going on, y'all? Let's be righteous again, and I'd like you to meet the Shadow Assassin. The purpose of this build is to become what the name suggests. Move in silence, fight from the shadows, and instantly eliminate your target. I have the tools you need to make this build for yourself. Let's begin with the archetype combo and how it all meshes together. You want to use the invader archetype as your primary. It has one of the best prime perks in the game. It's called Shadow. Casting an invader skill leaves a decoy for 3 seconds which draws enemy fire. Deal plus 5% additional damage to enemies not targeting the invader. Now everything in this archetype combo in regards to combat with the perks, whether it be an evade or a weak spot kill, increases overall damage, crit damage, ammo drops, and reload speed. The perfect killing machine. Because that's really all the hunter specializes in, damage. Which is why it's perfect for any secondary archetype. So the first skill I'm using for the invader is called Void Cloak. You automatically perfect dodge incoming direct damage for 60 seconds. Each auto evade reduces timer by 33% to 100% based on damage absorbed. And it spawns the decoy for 3 seconds. The cooldown is 75 seconds. It's pretty long but you could add some cooldown rings if you want to. But 60 seconds is a long time isn't it? And I'm talking about the 33 to 100% damage absorbed if you don't get attacked this skill can be used as a safety net while you're in combat for a whole minute just in case an enemy decides to attack you from behind or whatever and some may think that using this skill will handicap you meaning that if you rely on this auto evade then you'll never get good at perfect evades on your own i don't see it that way because in apocalypse you'll be lucky to get three or four dodges just in general, sometimes BS happens when trying to evade with button input delays or whatever the case. BS happens. So this is nice to have so that it can circumvent some of those untimely mistakes. Also, as I said before, I see it as a safety net, a way to teach you what a perfect evade actually is. There was a couple times when I was fighting the Fae King when he did his one hit fire damage from below. I would evade a little bit too early and then the perfect evade would save me. So I'm like, okay. Now I gotta wait a little bit longer to evade so that I can dodge that. This is really good practice. Plus, it pretty much guarantees free damage since I'm using a ring called Feedback Loop. Perfect Dodge triggers a 3 meter AoE blast that deals 115 shock and applies Overloaded. First of all, this deals insane damage without any buffs. Secondly, the Shadow Prime perk, when upgraded to level 10, deals 15% additional damage to enemies not targeting the invader. So the Shadow I leave behind ensures the enemy won't be looking at me. That being said, this is exactly what this build exemplifies. Furthermore, the ring I have to complement this is the assassin seal. You know that ring that you get right before you get the assassin's blade? This also grants 10% damage to targets not attacking me and reduces awareness of the enemy by 25%. So almost every single arrow I fire is when the enemy doesn't know. <laughs> Sometimes when I fall back a little, they even lose interest in me. That's how much stealth this build has. You see why it's called the Shadow Assassin, right? By the way, I'm using Hunter's Shroud for my second skill, so I alternate between the two. It's the perfect fusion. The amulet I have is called the Energy Diverter. <laughs> While a shield is active, gain 10% crit chance and 15% to all damage dealt. Now this, in the tightly wound coil ring, which is when spending 75% or more of current magazine, Gain a shield for 10% of max health for 5 seconds does not stack with itself. With any bow, the ammo count is always less than 75%. So this means that you get a shield every time you fire, which then gives you the bonus from Energy Diverter. This is such an amazing combo. Now this bow I got from Nimue's Dream. Just wait for her to sleep, then use the Dream Catcher on her to get the crystal. You can then craft it at Ward 13. But this bow has to be the best in the game. I haven't used the other one yet. Oh, I forgot what it's called. But here's what this bow does. When activating the skill, regular shots automatically become charged shots. And charged shots fire two arrows at once, then returning the arrows that hit back into your ammo count. So this bow is extremely powerful. And I almost feel like I should be using an Archon Hunter combo so that I can activate the skill a lot more frequently. But that's a build for another day. The mutator on here is crazy too. It's called Supercharger. 
It increases the charge speed of bows and fusion rifles by 10%. Charge primary shots gain 15% critical chance. Now, critical hit chance is hard to get. 15% is a lot. And you know crit is the source of DPS in this game because it's multiplicative damage. So if you happen to get a crit weak spot is when you really start to see the enemy bosses and elites getting chunked. Speaking of weak shot damage, check out this ring. It's called the Ring of Flawed Beauty. You can get this from Cass. One day she'll have it in her inventory and I was just lucky to get it today. Ranged weak spot damage is increased by 25%, but range damage is reduced by 15% when failing to hit a weak spot. This further emphasizes the fact that this is for a precision player. Your goal is to only go for weak spot damage, and when you do, the reward will be worth it. But what if you go against an enemy who has no weak spot? Well, I have two solutions for that, and that's why this bow is so great. The first method is the two arrows that fire as a result of using the skill. It deals a ton of damage. Secondly, the melee weapon I'm using is a gem. The crow axe is better than most people give it credit for. I explained this in another video where I broke down why the crow axe throw is so good. Because I'm using it with the blood jewel. Charged melee attacks apply bleeding dealing 460 bleed damage over 20 seconds and since the throw is considered a charged melee attack it will cause the target hit to bleed and shock from the Krell Axis skill. Not only that but the damage is insane if you have it leveled up. And of course if you want to use the Enigma for add control that's always great. It's what I'm using for my secondary weapon. And the armor I have is nothing special. It looks cool. I wanted to embody an archer style and I think this did it. I'm very lightweight. My evade roll is very fast so I'm like a ninja. I mean your goal is not to get hit anyway right? Here are the stats. And all of these increase based on whatever is going on while in combat but I think they're pretty impressive. Also the traits I use are to help me at least take one hit in apocalypse difficulty from a boss. Let me know down below if there are any other bows that you suggest. Also, anything that you think will help make this build better or an alternative playstyle. I appreciate you watching to the end. I'll see you in my next video. Be right out. Stronger than the fair. <laughs>